Today we're going to be replacing two restorations, aged amalgam restorations that have been in there for quite some time. Our anticipated treatment for today is going to be an inlay for tooth number 13 and an onlay for tooth number 14. So the first thing we want to do is uh, remove uh, the existing amalgam. We'll probably wind up removing the distal portion of his tooth. Uh, the next thing I'm going to want to do is we're going to break through the proximal contacts. So what we're trying to do is establish a nice near vertical wall. And I say near vertical because ideal taper is going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of four to six degrees. As you notice here, uh, we don't see any signs of fracturing uh, from a mesial distal direction. So it doesn't look like the cusp or the tooth itself needs additional support. We never depend on intracoronal splinting to fortify cusp, so I would advise against that. And relying on some experience, I've had great success with these types of uh, teeth. Um, avoiding the obvious need to do a crown uh, with more destruction of the tooth. And uh, the need to actually go more subgingively, which is something we like to avoid at all costs too. So we're going to commit to still doing a large inlay on the premolar. Now the one thing that I see here, if I want to maintain this cusp and I want a good mill quality, I'm probably going to put a little base material in here. So one of the two materials you're going to use would either be a resin modified glass ionomer or a composite. We'll probably choose to use a composite here. Scotch Bond Universal is a really good material. We've used it successfully in our practice. Um, with really no incidence of sensitivity. It's unique in the fact that um, you can use it in a total etch, self-etch, or a selective etch mode. Here we're going to use uh, simply a uh, self-etch mode. Saving tooth structure is valuable. And once you remove the axial walls of a tooth, the tooth loses rigidity. And it becomes much weaker. So we're going to go ahead and apply a little global resin right here. So at this point we're going to be ready for imaging. And you can see we have rounded angles, smooth floors, proper depth. The thing I might like to point out is you can see we have a really nice stable environment so we can do good imaging here. It's usually better to get the buckle bite before you anesthetize the patient, you're generally going to get them in a better centric situation. My preference on these is to always mill and place the smallest restoration first. It's much easier to take a large restoration and adjust it to the smaller one rather than it is to take a very small one and adjust proximal contacts on both surfaces. Tap, tap, tap a couple times. And it looks like she's picked up the contacts exactly where we designed them in the software. Be careful about spinning this too much because you'll burnish the paste in. At this point, we're going to condition the intaglio. Conditioning for the intaglio with Lava Ultimate involves air abrasion or sandblasting. there's perhaps no more critical part of, of this entire procedure than this because you, 